This is the second of a two-part borders and sashing and listening to your quilt. This design we're going to take from the two feathered blocks that we have previously made. And that was making a freehand feather. It's a traditional type of feather that is stitched like this. This is the one where we have the bird wing going around the sun and coming back to a point. And you repeat that over and over. The bird wing going around the sun and back the bird wing going around the sun and back. This is the common feather and the one that we've learned before. The heirloom feather or otherwise known as the bump back is something I showed you before where you start out with the full feather. From that point on you only do part of the feather. You go around, bump into the feather before, backtrack, and go back to the stem again. You go around, bump into the feather before, backtrack, and around. Here's a third type of feather, and it's a feather with a twist. It's sort of taking the, of what we've learned so far and combining it. There's our full feather. And we're going to do sort of like a bump back right here we're going to make a little change. Here we're going to add a little swirl and that's our twist. We'll backtrack, go back around just like a bump back feather. And go back up again as if we're going to do a bump back feather. However, we're going to do that twist in there. stem. You'll notice before we start that I have stitched a quarter of an inch away from both sides and now we're ready to start our feathers with a twist. I want you to look real close as we start this feather and tell me if you see something different. Watch real close. Do you see it? It was actually stitched backwards. You're so good that I know you can handle that. Now we're going to come up with that twist, but this is what you do not want to do. Pay close attention here. We're coming in for that swirl, but we're taking too big of a swirl. It almost looks like a finger with a thumb, a thumb with a big thumbnail on it. It's not real attractive, so you probably don't want to do it that way. So let's go back down again, and we'll start back up with our bump back with a twist. This time we're going to make the swirl a little bit more pleasing to the eye. We're only going about halfway in and now we have a correct swirl. Back to our normal feather, back, back, uh, bump back that is. Can't get my voice working here. Now we're going to go back up. I'm going to take it slow, slowed it down for you. This is our feather with a twist a little swirl in the middle <clears throat> and now we're going to backtrack again now if you notice between the two feathers do you see a V you want to create another V when you come out of this twisted part so you're going to go down part way and then back up to come around for the other feather that makes the second V that's the kind of look that you want to have. It makes more of a separation. If you have the V's, you're good to go.
this next order is taking a little bit of tucking in the baby, but also with a twist. So we're going to do a curve, but not directly from side to side. If you'll see, it's about mm, maybe three quarters of away. Now we're going to go halfway back on that. And then we're going to swing up to the other side. We're going to go halfway back that arc. And swing back up to the other side. So it's sort of like tucking in the baby, but there's more backtracking. We're only going from side to side part way, stopping and going to the other side. It gives you the effect of a, a braided sashing. It's kind of easy to do. So you just continue on like this. for you overachievers, and I know there are quite a few of you out there, you could try doing this. Just fill in that woven line with a series of lines back and forth. And then go over the original lines to make those darker and you'll have something really special. So now the only thing that we have left to complete our sample are the cornerstones and they of course come from the orange peel design. To prepare to make the cornerstone use a ruler and mark a diagonal line from the inner corner to the outer corner of the square. After you've done that we're prepared to start the stitching. Now, do you remember how we did those before? We're going to curve up and into the corner, curve around and into the opposite corner, curve out and down to the bottom corner, and then hop over to the beginning. Again, with a twist, we're going to make a little curve up to the corner and back down to our starting point. And that's our cornerstone which will end up looking like this. So there you have it, folks. Here's our background filled, textured wall hanging with all the things that you've learned. I hope you've had fun with it, at least as much fun of, as I've had bringing it to you. And I look forward to our next project. I'll be announcing what that's going to be along with the supply list very soon. Until then, bye for now.